as we've just heard, New Hampshire has a record in the making right now in this primary. So all eyes are certainly on the Granite State tonight as the first in the nation primary heads into the close. Our very own Trish Regan is in Manchester with the latest. And Trish, mm -hmm. uh, first, I want to get a sense of what you're feeling there, the, the electricity, uh, what's happening on the ground, what's the word? Well, listen, it's always a big deal. Every four years, New Hampshire really lives and breathes this kind of stuff. So they look forward to it, I can tell you. Having grown up here, uh, it, it is a very big deal. This year, it seems to be an especially big deal. I mean, you know that, Charles. Just all the coverage that we've had over this election, uh, the interest, obviously, that everybody has had in this election. And it looks like we are going to see a record night here in New Hampshire. The Secretary of State predicted that we may get 550,000 voters. That would be huge turnout. The last record was 530,000, which we saw eight years ago. They do expect to exceed that. Um, and certainly by all indications, uh, people are going to the polls and, and they're making their decisions there. So it'll be an interesting night. Now, Connell uh, mentioned earlier, almost 50% of the voters have made up their mind in the last 48, 72 hours. You're from New Hampshire. Why do you guys procrastinate so long? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, see, I'm a journalist, so I can get away with that, right? I just say, look, I wait until the last minute, till I have my deadline. But, uh, it, you know, I think th the reason they procrastinate so long here, Charles, is really fundamentally about wanting to make sure that they are making the right decision. People here take this responsibility, as you could call it, very seriously. And they see themselves as vetting who will be the nominee for each party. So they wait. And they wait, and they want to feel like they know everyone. So they, 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 they need to feel like they, they've met. And there's an old joke, right? One farmer says to the other, who are you going to vote for? And the other farmer says, I don't know. I've only met each of the candidates three times. It's true here. You have the opportunity to do that because it's so small. That's what makes it unique. And that's why voters hold out to the last minute. I just spoke to a, a, a voter, uh, a Republican, earlier this afternoon who said to me he waited until the last minute. He wound up voting for Kasich, but he wanted to feel like he knew each of the candidates and where they stood. Did he say why? Uh, because I feel like Kasich is coming on. He's got some momentum here, for sure, Charles. I, the reason he told me was because Kasich, he said, can really unite people. He's got the experience as a governor, and he felt like he would be able to bring both sides together uh, and would be less polarizing. Um, so, you know, we'll see. He is coming on. Kasich's doing a pretty, pretty well here, you know, and look, if he comes in two, three, or four, he gets to live another day. He certainly does. Uh, before I let you go, everyone's talking about the ground game. We heard how important it was in Iowa. Uh, why, again, it, uh, listen, New Hampshire, they're used to driving in the snow. You guys, you know, you grew up doing that. Yeah. Uh, so why is this so critical? the ground game yeah. oh, because people want it they want to feel like you know that, that, that there's some work that goes into it right it's a little like dating <laughs> you got it you got to actually have some pursuit and so you know going and knocking on someone's door people expect to get that knock on the door mm. and they want to hear um, from these candidates supporters and if they don't get that they kind of feel like hey you know, we're, we're making a big decision here. This is part of what you sign up for. If you're going to run for president and you're going to be in the first in the nation primary, then you've got to actually come forward. You've got to have your people, the, the, the ground troops that are out there doing the door-to-door -door campaigning. I remember as a kid with my parents going around doing the door-to-door -door campaigning for the, with them, with some of the candidates that they were supporting. That's expected. Wow. And so this, this whole season has been extraordinarily different and interesting. Donald Trump hasn't had a lot of that. He's had these big rallies that he flies in for. Um, he's got a lot of momentum, a lot of attention here in New Hampshire, but he doesn't quite have the ground uh, operation that, that yeah. you typically see in this state. Yeah, a lot of people are, going, are saying this would certainly test New Hampshire's uh, reputation as a retail place. But to your point, Trish, we all love to be wooed. Thanks a lot, Trish. Uh, we appreciate it. You bet, it. Charles, anytime. All right, see you soon. <laughs> of course.